Om 34 minuter kommer jag och min mamma bli allvarligt skadade i en frontalkrock. Oj, a las 6 de la tarde, en 10 minutos, voy a tener un accidente con mi coche. Voy a estamparlo contra un guardarrail. In the next 13 minutes, somewhere in Europe, someone will die. In the next hour, 30 Europeans will be seriously injured. In the next year, 40,000 people, the equivalent of a small city, will vanish. The average driver somewhere in Sweden had about 27 years between major accidents. So he is perfectly driving 27 years before, on average, he makes the fault. Behind closed doors, a new breed of scientist in Europe works against the clock in a secret world to stop an epidemic. In three and a half minutes, I will have an accident. They mimic a place where the forces of gravity are multiplied 90 times, where a tenth of a second can mean the difference between life and death. What if a car could predict and avoid a crash? Da muss nicht immer jemand sterben. The race to build the crash-proof car has begun. A thinking car, too smart to crash. For the last 50 years, engineers have focused on creating a crash-worthy car. A car built to give you the best chance of survival in an accident. The seat belt, the padded dash, safety glass, crumple zones, and the airbag are all designed to absorb the tremendous forces of a crash. But this world of passive safety is now making room for a revolution in technology. The world of the intelligent car, built with active safety technology. Thomas Broberg crashes cars for a living. As head of Volvo's crash test lab in Gothenburg, Sweden, he's part of the engineering revolution that will change the way we drive forever. Aktiv säkerhet är mer funktioner som stödjer föraren. Antingen när föraren är i en kritisk situation så att föraren kan, kan komma ur den situationen. Lasers, radar, heat sensing cameras and even robotics combine with the exponential growth in computer power to create a new kind of car. A car that can save your life. Engineers are reinventing our most beloved machine with a suite of technological gadgets that give the driver another set of eyes on the road. For example, today's thinking car uses sophisticated cameras to detect when the driver is drifting out of the lane. A warning alerts him to correct his steering and get back on course. March 2007, a head-on collision near Gothenburg, Sweden. Two families out on a Sunday afternoon drive that went terribly wrong. And all this might have been averted with a simple audio warning. Jag och min mamma blev allvarliga skadad. The trip that almost cost Victoria and her mother their lives began around two o'clock. Her parents get into the front seat, and as usual, 
Her father gets behind the wheel for the short afternoon drive. Gert drives a comfortable 70 kilometers an hour. Coming from the opposite direction, another family is also heading home on the same road. The bucolic countryside flies by with no hint of anything unordinary. So I went home, so my daughter and my fru, they were just trotting in the car, so they were just in the car. Neither family will make it to their destination. Gert's car drifts into the wrong lane. Today's technology, called lane departure warning, would have alerted him before it was too late. As soon as the tire comes in contact with the center white line, the car recognizes it's leaving the lane and emits a warning. That would have given Gert the critical seconds to steer back on course. But that's not what happened. Jag kan ju inte säga idag för det är ju ingen som vet egentligen vad. Jag minns ju så stunden exakt innan innan jag krockade. Miraculously, the baby and both parents emerge from this wreckage with minor injuries. But it's another story for Victoria Abramson and her parents. Mamma låg i rummet bredvid och de visste inte om hon skulle klara sig eller. Two seconds on a country road and life is changed forever. In the next 13 minutes, will Victoria's mother become the latest fatality in an epidemic that claims a million people a year worldwide? Ja, ja. Kände mig skyldig till till vad som hade hänt. Det gjorde jag för att jag anklagar ju mig själv hela tiden att det var något som jag hade gjort fel för att åstadkomma mina kära. En sån olycka det Julia faktiskt. The technological race is on to stem an epidemic that costs Europe 200 billion euros a year. At BMW alone, 430 intelligent cars roll off the ramp every hour. Werner Huber's specialty is finding a way to harness machine intelligence to create a crash-proof car. Here we see the night vision sensor. The night vision sensor is an infrared camera that in a distance of 250 to 300 meters warm objects. You can imagine the problem when people are walking during night on a rural road, as a driver, you can't see them. For that, we developed a system, it's called night vision with pedestrian detection, where you can see people in a range of 300 meters beyond your high beam, and you can detect them. The thinking car triggers up to 1,200 computer messages a second. Messages that alert the driver there's a vehicle in his blind spot. That can keep a safe distance from the traffic ahead with adaptive cruise control. And that can even brake the car automatically to avoid a serious collision or hitting a pedestrian. When we look at the accident statistics, uh, we see about 85% of the accidents being caused somehow by the driver either by uh, fatigue, inattentiveness, or other reasons. Fatigue and inattentiveness. These are the newly recognized silent killers behind the wheel. To help drivers keep their eyes on the road, auto safety engineers like Werner Huber 
borrow an idea from the cockpits of the fighter jets, the heads-up display. The head-up display shows you a hologram onto the road by mirror system, which is integrated in the dashboard. Werner Huber has entry to a secret world combining the latest science of human perception with mechanical and electrical engineering. This is the first time outside cameras have been allowed into this highly restricted area. Engineers fine-tune a color 3D image projected on a 2D windshield. By day, Werner and his team seek to develop a perfect hologram. But by night, he unwinds by jamming with friends. It was after one of these sessions, almost a decade and a half ago, that he learned firsthand the deadly cost of driver fatigue. Okay. In 27 minutes, there will be something on the train with which I would not have expected. 2 a.m., the first hours of St. Nicholas Day in Munich, Germany. The Autobahn is quiet this morning. And Werner Huber is about to fall asleep. The car starts to drift, wobbling within the lane markings. Einer Sekunde Schlaf. Die Augen fielen kurz zu. Ich schreckte wieder hoch. Äh, merkte ich, wie mein Fahrzeug links die Mittelleitplanke berührte. He hits the guardrail, triggering a potentially deadly chain of events. Ich reagierte, indem ich das Fahrzeug gegenlenkte. The wet motorway means he has no traction as he tries to regain control of the car. Das Adrenalin war auf Maximum, natürlich. Mein erster Gedanke war, ähm, ich stehe auf der linken Spur einer Autobahn. Hochgefährlich. 70 Prozent der Autobahnunfälle passieren auf der linken Spur. Werner escapes and tries to warn oncoming cars. The first set of headlights appear and then another. Both cars pass without incident. But the third one will not be so lucky. The other drehte sich noch einmal and then war erstmal erstmal Ruhe. Erlebnis dieses Unfalls dachte ich, der, der ist, der hat es nicht überlebt und ich war natürlich. Total geschockt. Schließlich war ja mein Fahrzeug auf der Autobahn quer gestanden und ähm, damit die Ursache für, für den Unfall. Despite the odds, the other driver survives. But the trauma of falling asleep at the wheel and almost killing someone gave Werner's work a new urgency. There are two ways to die in a car crash. Hitting an obstacle or leaving the road. Skidding and losing control of the vehicle can lead to both deadly scenarios. Almost two decades after his own accident, there is now a new technology that would have changed the devastating chain of events. It's called Electronic Stability Control, or ESC, and it prevents the kind of skidding that could have killed Werner and the other driver who hit his car on the Autobahn. It works by breaking individual wheels to counter the effect of over or under steering. This simple black wire carries electronic signals from the car's sensors to trigger the braking action. With 35 kilometers of test track mimicking all conceivable road designs and weather, the track 
itself is a massive engineering laboratory. Taking his cue from Werner, this professional driver is about to take the spin of his life. Okay, Heinz, we beschleunigen. Ja, prima, geht noch mehr. With no electronic stability control, watch what happens when he hits the slippery road surface, just as Werner experienced on the Autobahn. This time, the driver activates electronic stability control. Keep your eye on the front right-hand wheel on the passenger side as the electronic stability system kicks in. Ja, das war wunderbar, perfekt. The wheel actually stops moving. For a fraction of a second, the car effectively takes over from the driver, using the brakes on the individual wheels to bring the car back on course. In 2005, these images changed the way that researchers worldwide understood driving behavior. It was the first time cameras recorded drivers in real cars on real roads. 100 cars, 3 million kilometers, and 8,000 crashes or near crashes. This woman is about to nod off and leave the road. One of the two deadliest scenarios in a car. After alcohol, nothing slows down reaction time more than fatigue. Driving drunk, that's already quite known. Everyone knows that, it, that it's not too good to get into the car with a couple of beers. Discrepancy with sleepy driving is that it is a, a problem as big as the alcohol was, I think. You have much longer reaction times. You're not cannot pay attention enough. So sleepy driving is, is quite a problem. Deep in the inner sanctum of Volvo's headquarters in Sweden, Henrik Lind is experimenting with ways for the thinking car to recognize driver fatigue. This work has never been seen before. He's armed with a toolbox of cameras, sensors, radar, and something called the eye tracker. When I move my sight to the left and to the right... Until now, the eye tracker has been used as a research tool only. But could this system of cameras aimed at the driver himself hold the key to an early warning system that could save his life? ...or attention level to the road, really. So this is what it looks when I'm awake. And now I'm feeling very, very tired. What happens is that this area turns red. And this means that uh, you're probably quite drowsy and you should take a, or you should possibly break and take a coffee. Today's technology uses a camera aimed outside the car, monitoring the driving patterns inside the lane markings and alerting the driver well in advance of actually leaving the lane. It's called driver alert. That simple beep might have been enough to alert Werner. At the Volvo test track in Sweden, balloon cars help engineers understand driver behavior in the critical seconds before impact. Remarkably, even fully alert, faced with an imminent collision, 
half of drivers will not hit the brake at all. A phenomenon analyzed by Henrik Lind. The driver has, has, a, has a problem, and the problem is called reaction time. And the reaction time of a typical driver in a critical situation is between one and one and a half second. konnte es nicht kontrollieren. Und der Mensch ist der Regler dieses Systems, Fahrzeug, Fahrer, Umwelt. Und dann passiert was und du merkst, ich bin unfähig gewesen, ähm, dieses System zu regeln. Das zeigt dir die eigene Begrenztheit auf. The challenge to build a crash-proof car takes Werner inside the infinitesimal window of time before a crash the critical microseconds before impact. All of his work is about finding a way to steal more reaction time for the driver. An extra millisecond of reaction time can mean the difference between life and death. He's about to go back into the belly of the beast, a beast at the Netherlands Organization for Applied Scientific Research. This is the most sophisticated driving simulator in the world. They call her Desdemona. Here, Werner will confront his limitations as a human being by reliving his own accident. But this time, he is fully alert and well rested. Can he bring the car under control? Uh, be careful when you drive the simulator, because what will happen is we'll try to mimic the motion as good as possible. Okay. Uh, including your spin, for example. So if you spin, the simulator will start spinning as well. Okay. Uh, if you do that three or four times, it will yeah. make you sick. Okay, yes, we okay. will see. We will see. Okay. Uh, so in. Step in, please. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, you're driving. Okay. I can remember that situation. It was night, two o'clock in the morning. So all of a sudden, I crashed into that little barrier. Then I tried to take control over the car. It's a simulator, so the advantage is that you're still driving, your car is not broken, you can do it again. Cool. <laughs> we should build such a car. Yes. <laughs> Werner attempts to gain control of his car three times in the simulator, but he cannot improve his own reaction time. Even the experts in car safety technology cannot transcend their own biological and perceptual limits. Okay, okay. You can come out of the simulator. Very good, thank you. How do you feel? A bit shaky? A, a little bit, yes. Okay. After one second, you feel like in the accident. You lose control over the car, you crash into the other barrier, yeah. and then you, you are only focused on, 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 on controlling the situation again. And that you is are, very realistic. You're very, very immersed in the, yeah, in the simulation. Yeah. And when yeah. you stand at the barrier, you say, OK, I should get out of here, yeah. <laughs> since maybe a car will crash into mine. Reaction time is the human frailty that must be overcome by technology. But there is also brute physics at play. Energy unleashed at impact. The tremendous forces absorbed by the human body trapped in a maelstrom. These surrogate humans enable investigators to calculate the precise g-forces triggered at impact.
In the Swedish head-on collision, the G-forces inside the car will reach 40 times body weight, all in a fraction of a second. Crash takes a very small time, it's one tenth of a second, and then everything happens in the crash. Occupants are stopped. During that tenth of a second, you will also get a risk of getting serious or injuries. Anders Kolgren is a special breed of accident detective. With the help of medical specialists like Dr. Olli Bunkentorp, he looks for clues in the human body itself, matching specific injuries to the actual deformation patterns of the smashed vehicle. The wreckage of the Abramson head-on collision, for example. How did Gert, the driver, escape without injury? What caused Victoria's paralysis? And why did the mother in the front seat suffer a broken neck? A detailed analysis of the injuries led to a simple and yet dramatic conclusion. Skulle att få den allvarliga skadan i halsryggen hade minskat betydligt. Hade varit ytterligare 15 km lägre klockhastighet, då kanske halsryggen hade hållit. Investigators on the scene of the Abramson head-on collision were puzzled. Trapped in the same lane coming from opposite directions, why didn't either driver hit the brakes sooner? A difference of only 15 kilometers an hour would have saved both Victoria's mother and Victoria from life-threatening injuries. But when drivers don't brake fast or hard enough, where to get those 15 kilometers an hour? Henrik Lind and his team are working on an idea that will revolutionize the world of auto safety. A car that reacts with superhuman speed, without emotion. A car that breaks itself. Oops, sorry. The most efficient thing he can do is to uh, reduce the speed uh, by, by braking, really. And th that, that means that the impact speed would be lower in, in a crash situation. Using radar to detect a potential collision, the intelligent car prepares the brakes for a rapid fire response. Whether the driver reacts to the forward collision warning or not, the car itself will brake, dramatically reducing the energy at impact. Automatic braking has the potential to be one of the most effective safety technologies since the seatbelt. When we study real-life accidents trying to estimate the effectiveness of it, it could actually half the number of injured due to this automatic braking. That means potentially half a million fewer car injuries every year in Europe. In a world where milliseconds can separate life and death, the thinking car can break itself up to a full two seconds before impact. In this head-on collision, automatic braking would have reduced the speed of the Swedish car from 70 kilometers to 57, even if Gert did not apply brakes at all. The injury severity would probably be much lower if we have that automatic braking system on that vehicle. 
After months of hospitalization and rehab, Victoria recovered from her injuries. Miraculously, so did her mother. They thought that neither would ever walk again after surviving the rarest but deadliest kind of car accident, the head-on collision. Det är klart jag vill vara som jag var tidigare, men eh, detta har ju också gett en, en annan, eh, ja, ett annat liv och man sätter värde på saker och ting. Är som person att hon är nog en, en lite mer ja, lättsammare och, och avslappnad människa idag. Håller du, håller du med? Jag var nog lite i salt, nej, nej, det säger jag inte, men, men mer... Mm. <laughs> How Gert escaped without injury remains a mystery. And still, he was unable to come to the assistance of the two people who needed him the most. Jag minns att jag kom ur bilen. Jag minns att jag skulle springa och rädda, ta ur min dotter och min bror bilen. Men jag kom ju aldrig så långt för jag ramlade ju kul i diket. A passing motorist called for emergency assistance, putting Dr. Par Ottovand and his trauma team on standby. Every passing minute will make their job to save Victoria and her mother in Galiz more difficult. The golden hours, as it's called, is actually something that belongs to the patient and not to the doctor. At the tenth of a second of impact, a new race begins. The race to survive. If you stop breathing, you have half an hour. If the heart stops, you have nine minutes to get help. Bei einem Unfall zählt jede Minute, um die Überlebenswahrscheinlichkeit der Insassen zu erhöhen. Satellites combined with today's mobile phone technology equip the car itself to send out the call for help. E-call will enable emergency crews to respond faster and with pinpoint accuracy to collisions anywhere in Europe. E-call really provides a means that when you are involved in a car accident that you have 100% guarantee that help will arrive, whether you're conscious or unconscious. Because in case that you cannot activate an emergency call yourself, then the car will generate it automatically. The same sensor that activates the airbags also activates the e-call unit, a mobile phone unit that triggers the 112 emergency call, including data about the accident itself. This 112 call center outside of Amsterdam alone handles 5 million calls a year. Operators have 90 seconds to dispatch help. If those 90 seconds are really needed to have the exact location, people are in distress, you have to calm them down, they don't know where they are. So if we can find some technology like ECO, which is really will reduce that to within 10 seconds, then you can calculate that you will save over a minute at each call. And those are matters that count. Those life-saving minutes will make the difference for the safety of others on the road too. E-Call buys time for emergency crews to take the critical measures needed to avoid secondary accidents. And knowing the details of the collision in advance means working faster to extract trapped victims. With less risk for the emergency response team. The European Commission predicts that E-Call could save the lives of 25 100 people a year. E-call could save about economic costs about 4 billion euros a year.
the thinking car is not only designed to avoid crashing into other cars, but to sense and avoid crashing into the most vulnerable person on the road, the pedestrian. At Daimler headquarters in Stuttgart, this research car is learning how to recognize pedestrians and predict where they're going, and then automatically hit the brakes, all without the driver. The main challenge for, uh, for a machine to see pedestrians and to recognize pedestrians is the enormous um, appearance variation induced by clothing, in induced by gait, by pose, by viewpoint, and the ever-changing backdrop. So what we are doing here is a basically a learning approach. We teach the machine how pedestrians look like by means of many thousands, if not millions, of samples. You are about to take a test drive in the car of the future. As a driver, you will never see this screen. These are the eyes of the car. You are looking at how the computer sees the world. A world in which the distance to objects is represented by color and direction represented by arrows. So the arrows are green. If there's no danger, they get yellow. If there's a danger, that those points will come very close to us and the arrows get red if there's a high risk of a collision. This is the brave new world of machine intelligence. This car can see into the future, up to a full second as it predicts movement. This enhanced awareness means it can react faster than any human being. From the tracking, we, need, we know speed of the car, acceleration, but also the turn rate, so we know whether it's going straight or the car is going to turn here. Now, what I'm doing is I'm teaching cars to see. I'm giving them eyes, kind of. And if you have a closer look at this woman, you can see that there's actually motion vectors at each point. So the vectors point in the direction of movement and show the, the, the movement length. So if you analyze this, you can tell how fast the person is moving and which direction it goes. With cars now capable of automatic braking and steering within lane markings, can the fully automated car be far behind? This researcher at the University of Würzburg is driving a simulator with her hands off the wheel. When a wild boar unexpectedly jumps onto the road, she can't react in time. The main problem of, of active safety systems, of highly automated active systems, is that we run into the danger that the driver gets more and more out of the loop. Human factor labs around Europe try to figure out just exactly where is the loop. By measuring electrical activity, they can see how hard the driver's brain is actually working. But too many warnings can lead to distraction. Either extreme means the driver's not able to handle a surprise on the road, like this, real-life, unexpected maneuver on the Autobahn near Weisbaden that almost caused a rear-ender. So the real intelligence system would be there for the driver to keep him awake when, when, when it's dull driving and to keep quiet when driving needs all the attention and everything in between that. Trying to find the right balance between man and machine is the biggest challenge created by mushrooming automation in the car. When is the car smarter than the driver? Why not let the machine make the decision? And here's the frage, wie weit nehmen wir den Fahrer und wann nehmen wir den Fahrer aus der Rolle als Regler des Systems raus und übernehmen die Situation bei, mit, mit autonomem Fahren. Und dieser, 
dieser Mix, der ist sehr schwierig. Der ist sehr schwierig. Wir, wir wollen nicht den totalen autonomen Verkehr, aber wir wollen den Fahrrad zunehmend mehr Sicherheit bieten. Und da, ich glaube, da, da glaub in diesem, in, in diesem, in, dieser Mix wird entscheidend sein für die Zukunft. Welcome to the fastest highway in Europe. At 200 kilometers an hour or more, this is the one place you'd want all the drivers on the road to be fully in the loop and paying attention. Here on the Autobahn outside of Munich, you're about to meet the driver of tomorrow in the car of today. For the next 14 seconds, David Sanchez is going to let this Honda Accord take over the driving. This car is now driving itself. El sistema está reconociendo en todo momento las líneas de carril y puede incluso ejercer un par sobre la dirección, sobre el volante, de forma que ayuda al coche a mantenerse sobre el carril. De todas formas, esto es algo que yo no recomiendo hacer. El vehículo puede hacerlo durante unos segundos, pero no recomiendo hacer, porque el sistema está pensando como un soporte a la conducción, no como un sustitutivo del conductor. Sanchez is the face of the 21st century driver. At 30 years old, he's also part of the European race to build a car too smart to crash. He's a specialist in an abstract virtual world called HMI, Human Machine Interface. His mission, to create a new language between the driver and the car. At CTAG, this automotive research institute in Vigo, Spain, Sanchez draws from a pool of inventors who make cyber gadgets for the thinking car. Buttons with brains, highly sophisticated computer chips embedded behind the simplistic icons. His team specializes in the science of the beep, the flash, and the vibration. How the car communicates to the driver and in turn interprets the driver's intentions is the key to the ultimate thinking car. A car that can avoid a crash. Hablar de el ADI perfecto es algo muy, muy difícil. Es decir, hay millones de conductores en el mundo, millones de gustos personales, millones de diferentes formas de hacer las cosas. Es muy difícil hablar de un, un HMI perfecto. At the University of Würzburg, researchers are trying to gauge how many beeps the driver can tolerate before the warning itself becomes a distraction. We try to, yeah, to analyze uh, how the driver reacts to it when he gets a warning. The driver gets a warning whenever he drives too fast. They are talking to you. They are giving an, an, a warning for something. They all make noises or sounds or whatever, otherwise it wouldn't be there. Or they have nice colors to show you something. So they have display, so it's visual, audio. They, they take something of your capacity, of your attention, away from your driving. Sanchez fine-tunes something he can't see or hear. It's a new idea to minimize the possibility that the safety warning itself could become a distraction. It's virtually silent. It's called a haptic warning. A vibration on the seat, the steering wheel, or even the seat belt. A friendly tug on the shoulder to pay attention. Okay, David, now we are going to test the lane departure warning, okay? Okay. Yes, here we have the vibration on the seat for the left side, okay, but maybe for the right is a little bit soon. Maybe we can change the calibration of the camera. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The race to develop a car capable of crash avoidance means that every manufacturer is competing to find the perfect HMI, that elusive connection between the driver and the car.
It took four decades to get the driving public to recognize and accept the value of the seatbelt in saving lives. But now the auto industry faces an even tougher challenge. Not only making the thinking car affordable and widely available, but then to convince the driver of its technological ability to save lives. A car that may be smarter than the driver is also a car that may scare him. The Angst begründet sich im Wesentlichen darin, dass die Leute nicht verstehen, was das System kann, nicht verstehen, was das System auch tut. Sie haben Angst, dass das, dass ein System die Kontrolle über das Fahrzeug übernimmt. Und ähm, unsere Aufgabe ist es nun, diese Angst den Leuten auch zu nehmen. Zu sagen, wir entwickeln ein System, das du verstehst, dessen Grenzen du genau kennst. Um, today we want to um, really do some brainstorming and find out... That's a problem sent to the 21st floor of BMW's headquarters in Munich. This room full of marketers has to come up with a way to pitch the latest thinking car that can see in the dark. So it's really feel safer. Because yeah. there is something fascinating about yeah. going to see at night. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid of the dark. <laughs> <laughs> but even for someone who's actually lived through a car accident, the thinking car, a car that can prevent crashes on its own, is going to be a tough sell. Det låter ju lite um, omöjligt. Om man gör en bil som är helt helt säker och, och att man inte kan krocka med den, det, det låter lite för bra för att vara sant. Deep in the woods, two hours drive from the scene of their own accident, the Abramsons are going to test the thinking car. On Volvo's Svenstien test track outside of Gothenburg, Henrik Lind is preparing a head-on collision. Can he and his team convince Victoria that a crash-proof car is possible in the future? Hey, hey. welcome. Thank you, Victoria. Hey, Henrik yeah. Lind. Hey, hey Inga Lisa. Anja Nemt, thank you. The Abramsons are about to witness for the first time, a replay of the moment that changed their lives. The impact speed of 40 kilometers an hour on the test track is about half of what this family experienced in real life. Now, Victoria gets behind the wheel of the car that could have saved both her and her mother from their life-threatening injuries. Okay. A self-breaking car. Du kör bara rakt fram här nu. Ja. 15 km i timmen. Och sen så ska jag distrahera dig lite grann. Har, har du tittat här nere på den här? First a collision warning, and then the car breaks itself. Över dig. Vad tycker du om det? Jag menar, hur kändes det? En väldigt ovanlig känsla, mm. såklart. Mm. Eh, ja, fantastiskt att det fungerar, mm. för det, det är ju uppenbart så, så kan det rädda många. Could this warning have made a difference for Gert that Sunday afternoon when his car drifted into the wrong lane and almost killed his wife and daughter? Ja, ja. Nu ska vi visa ett system som kallas för filvarning eller lane departure warning. It's an eerie replay of the worst moment of his life. 
the seconds his car drifted across the lane markings into the path of an oncoming car. This is the beep that could have saved Gert and his family from a head-on collision. In the last hour since we met the Abramsons, their story has repeated itself somewhere else in Europe, not once, but 30 times. Another motorway, another family, another tenth of a second in which life is changed forever. Different languages, different specialties. But these are the men and women who share a vision of a safer world. A world in which technology can help transcend our very human limitations behind the wheel. Our right vision is that we can have a crock-free future. The best would be if we don't have any different things overall, for then we have no risk of damage or death in traffic. Jag tycker vi, vi är skyldiga oss själva och framförallt på vår framtid och våra barn att vi, vi jobbar mot att försöka få bort detta.